The beginning of 2017 has seen the arrival of more than 4,000 troops in countries along NATO's eastern flank. The movement is part of the biggest reinforcement of NATO's collective defence in a generation and is known as enhanced forward presence. Enhanced forward presence is a demonstration that NATO understands the uh, risks of our region and is reacting proportionately, protecting us all, because we know that defence is indivisible. Split into four multinational battle groups, each consisting of approximately 1,000 soldiers with equipment and armoured vehicles, the deployment sees three of the battle groups stationed in the Baltic states, Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania, and one in Poland. But why is the deployment necessary? We have a neighbour who does not respect its own signature on international agreement, who is more and more openly asking for a change in the international value-based world order. They still think that uh, Baltic states and Poland are supposed to be the territories of influence to, to Russia and that uh, obsession that these territories have been lost to NATO and to the West is still in, very deeply in their consciousness and mind. And after uh, occupation of Crimea and uh, what's happening in Ukraine, it is clear that this mentality is still predominant in this country's leadership. Agreed at the NATO summit in Warsaw last year, the battle groups are combat ready and will train and operate alongside host nation forces. But just how serious is the threat? We don't see any imminent uh, uh, threat against any NATO ally, uh, but we see a more assertive Russia. A Russia which has uh, significantly increased its military presence in this uh, region which has invested heavily in uh, defence uh, military for many, many years. A Russia which uh, has been willing to use military force against a neighbour, against Ukraine and also against uh, Georgia. The Baltic states, which have large Russian-speaking populations and also share a border with Russia, were occupied during the Soviet Union era before regaining their independence in 1991. From very small age you felt repressed and occupied. This was exactly how it was growing up in the Soviet Union. I had to live with this internal feeling that it's all wrong and I cannot do anything about it. We do see the militarization of Kaliningrad, we do see aggressive exercises. All this signals very clear demonstration of muscles, of posture, demonstration of aggressive attitude and we need to respond uh, appropriately. So who is where? There are 15 initial troop contributing nations. In Estonia, the battle group is led by the United Kingdom with a deployment of 800 and further troops from France. In Latvia, the Canadians lead with 450 soldiers reinforced with troops from Albania, Italy, Poland, Slovenia and Spain. In Lithuania, the Germans lead with 450 troops, while Belgium, Luxembourg, the Netherlands and Norway also contribute forces. And in Poland, the United States leads with 1,000 troops, along with contributions from both Romania and the United Kingdom. People do see soldiers from enhanced forward presence, uh, our uh, British and French allies. They also see uh, the uh, Baltic Air Police mission airplanes uh, flying over their heads on exercise or uh, scrambling to uh, look at the planes which are violating our airspace. These are all visible signs that we are protected. Four battle groups will deploy on a rotational basis, with more nations expected to contribute forces in the future. They will remain in place as long as required. We need to face this reality and to adapt to it, of course, only with deterrence position. No threats, no uh, any kind of aggressive uh, reactions towards our neighbours, just commitment of deterrence and self-defence if necessary. We don't seek confrontation, we don't want a new Cold War. Actually, we seek dialogue with Russia, but we have to uh, send a clear message to avoid or prevent any misunderstanding, any, any miscalculation 
NATO stands as one for all, all for one. That's the best way to uh, prevent conflict.